Okay, so in this video, I'm going to explain how to use the complement versus the cumulative rule. And I'm going to show it for the binomial equation, the Poisson equation, and the hypergeometric equation. Three questions, one for each equation. I'm going to start with the binomial equation. And the easy thing to do is to list out all your possibilities first. Now, for the binomial equation, your possibilities are always based on capital N. So if my capital N is 10, it means that my maximum is 10 and my minimum is always zero. So I'm gonna start at zero and go up till my maximum of 10. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm gonna do the same thing for parts B, C, and D. So same thing in part B, my values are gonna be zero to nine. In part C, it's going to be zero to seven. And part D is going to be zero to eight. Okay, once you have listed out all your possibilities, the next step is to highlight what the condition is specifically asking you to do. Okay, so in question number A, it's telling me to find the probability of eight or less. So eight or less means less than or equal to eight or basically any number below and including eight. So I'm going to highlight all of those numbers in red. Okay, so basically the question is asking me to find the combined probability of all of these calculations right here highlighted in red. I'm gonna do the same steps for the rest of the questions as well. Okay, part B says find the probability at most one. So at most one means that my maximum is one. So zero and one. Okay, the third thing that you wanna do, well, I'll do it for the remaining two questions. Part C is at least two. So at least two means that two is my minimum and I'm doing everything above it. And part D is six or more. So that's six, seven, and eight, six or more. Okay, next step you wanna do is decide whether you want to use your cumulative rule or your complement rule. Now, pretty simple. If the ones highlighted in red, your actual calculations are more than the numbers highlighted in black, then you are going to use your complement rule. So in this first question, I have nine numbers highlighted in red and I have two numbers highlighted in black. The ones highlighted in red are more than black. So I'm going to use my complement rule. And the reason why is when you use the complement rule, you're always going to do the opposite calculations and you want to do less number of calculations always. So if I do my cumulative rule here, it's nine calculations. If I do my complement rule, it's two calculations. I always want to do less calculations. So that's why in my first case, it's going to be the complement rule. In my second case, the ones highlighted in red are less. So I'm just going to do my regular cumulative rule. In the third question, my ones highlighted in red are more. So I want to do my complement again because I want to do less calculations. And finally, in question number D, My ones highlighted in red are less number of calculations. There's only three calculations there. So I'm going to do my cumulative rule for part D as well. Now, the final thing is doing the equation. So for your complement rule, remember anytime you decide to do your complement rule, like I have in question number 1A, you have to do one minus, and then you have to put a bracket, and then you have to put all the complement calculations in the bracket. Remember, we are always doing the least number of calculations. So one minus P9 and P10. Okay, and anytime you have a complement rule, it's always one minus. In part B, I have my cumulative rule. So your cumulative rule, you just do whatever is highlighted in red.
Okay, so if it's a complement rule, you do one minus the calculations. If it's cumulative, you just do the regular calculations. Again, in part C here, it's one minus probability of zero and one. And finally, in part D, I'm doing my cumulative rule, so P6 plus seven plus eight. What you'll notice in all the questions that we'd, we've done so far and in all the remaining questions that we're about to do, we are doing these questions in the most efficient method. And that's all what complement versus cumulative is, a method that decides how efficient your solution is. Whichever method you do, you will get the same answer. It's just about doing it quicker. I'm gonna follow the same thing for question number two. It's gonna be very similar for the Poisson equation. There's just a slight equa uh, equation difference with Poisson that I'm going to explain, but majority of the steps are going to be the same. So again, let's start with the first step in the Poisson equation. Unlike the binomial equation, which told us our maximum, a Poisson equation does, ne does not tell us our maximum because your maximum is a very large number or even maybe does not exist in cases of Poisson which means that you can create a fake maximum. And I like to just create a fake maximum of 10 because that works for every question in this course. Okay. So I'm going to again, list out all my possibilities, make sure they are all black and I'm going to make it zero to 10 for all the Poisson equations. Again, remember that's my assumption that it's 10 and that assumption works for all these questions, but in reality, it's not the same. The next thing I'm going to do is highlight my conditions for all of them. So part A, probability X is greater than or equal to two. That's two to 10. Part B, X is less than or equal to one. That's zero and one. Part C, less than or equal to three. And then part D, greater than or equal to two. So those four right over there. Next, I'm going to decide whether to use complement or cumulative rule. If I look at this one, I have to do so many calculations. I'm just going to do the complement. In this one, I only have to do two calculations. So I'm going to just do my regular cumulative rule. Part C, I only have to do four calculations versus much more. So again, I'm just going to do cumulative. And part D, I have to do so many calculations, so I'm going to do my complement rule right there. Finally, I'm gonna list out the equations. So since it's complement, I have one minus square bracket P of whatever's highlighted in black, zero and one. Part B is regular cumulative, so I'm just zero plus P one. Again, part C is just cumulative, so P zero plus one plus two plus three, all my highlighted values. And part D is complement, which means I have to do one minus square bracket and then P of zero and P of one. Okay, so in question number three, we're going to discuss the same thing for the hypergeometric equation. The only difference between the previous two questions is we have to decide how to figure out our maximum for the hypergeometric equation. In the binomial equation, our maximum was capital N. In our Poisson equation, we just made the assumption that the maximum was 10. And now in the hypergeometric equation, it's going to change and be a slightly different method. So for the hypergeometric equation to determine the maximum, you look, need to look at two things. The first thing you need to look at is small n. And the second thing you need to look at is capital A. Now, in order to decide your maximum, you have to pick 
the lower of these two values. So my maximum is going to equal to four. Not going to get into great detail about why I've explained that in my lectures in class and you can always ask me and I will answer questions through email. But for this video, I'm not going to go into detailed explanation about why the maximum is the law of the two values. Okay, let's do the same thing for parts B, C and D. So my N is five and my A is seven. My maximum is the law of those two values, so it's five. My n is six. My a is eight. Therefore, my maximum is going to be six. And then in part D, my n is eight. My a is five. And my maximum is the law of these two values, which is five. Okay, so once we have our maximums, the next thing we wanna do is we just wanna list out all our possibilities. So for part A, my possibilities are going to be from zero to my max, so zero, one, two, three, four. For part B, it's going to be zero, one, two, three, four, five. For part C, it's zero to six. And part D is zero to five. Okay, so now that I've listed out all my possibilities, I just have to do my conditions. So in question 3a, it says find the probability of at least three. So at least three means three and above. So three and four, I'm going to highlight those in red. Part B says less than two. Part C says more than one. So more than one is two, three, four, five, six. And part D is at least two. So two, three, four. Five. Okay, next I wanna state whether I want to do my cumulative or complement rule. If I look at this part A right here, my highlighted values are two, so I'm just gonna do my regular cumulative rule. In part B, I have three calculations for my regular rule, three calculations for my complement, so it's honestly no difference. I'm just gonna do my regular cumulative rule Part C, I have to one, two, three, four, five calculations for my cumulative. So I'm going to switch to my complement and do complement for that one. And part D, again, it's going to be complement rule because the complement has very few calculations. The last thing to do is my equations. So for part A, it's just P of zero plus P of one plus P of two. For part B again, it's just P of three plus P of four plus P of five. For part C, it's gonna be one minus because it's our complement rule. And then we have P of zero plus P of one. And part D is the exact same as part C. It's gonna be a complement rule. So we have one minus and the complement is zero and one. So literally the exact same thing, one minus that. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that video and I will be posting other ones about how to do the exact binomial calculation, Poisson calculation and hypergeometric one as well.